Now I'll demonstrate the side view of the reach position, movement to the reach position and to the catch from the paddle simulator. Now, when I video you doing your movement to the reach position and to the catch, when you go to the reach position, I wanna see your momentum captured in this canoe. So in order to see that, this paddle simulator will move forward or this cart will move forward to capture that. So when you come forward, you come forward quickly using that momentum through your feet to push the cart forward, like so. I'm not always cognizant of my shoulder turn. And I notice that when I'm paddling, I'll revert to no shoulder turn. And it's just because of muscle memory. So sometimes when I demonstrate this, I, I'm not seeing my own shoulder turn. I'm saying this because I recognize that the people that I'm teaching may not have that built in yet. But you should struggle to attain that shoulder turn forward. So when you, when you go forward, you're coming from a sitting up position. Your hand is down at your hip, top hand at your hip and you're swinging forward until your hand comes, top hand comes up above your head, one fist length, and this shoulder is turned forward, like so. And you saw the movement being captured there, the momentum being captured and pushing me forward. And <clears throat> if you're sitting behind somebody, you know that when their hand pops above their head, their arm is straight, their lower arm is straight out, and it's a shoulder turn. So that's what you want to capture in the reach. And you also know that when they achieve their reach position, their shoulder is turned, the T-handle is above their head, one fist length, and the T-handle is above their head, right down the middle. And then when you rotate Remember, keeping this shoulder pointed forward, you're now gonna rotate the handle this way to come to the catch position. You're gonna rotate the handle, your body's gonna lean a little bit, so instead of down the middle of the canoe, through the middle of your forehead, you're now gonna lean a little bit, so the middle of the canoe is more towards your ear. But you don't want to lean so much that this ear is outside the gunnel. So this ear needs to stay inside the gunnel. So we come forward. This hand pops up. It's in the middle of our forehead. Now we rotate and lean at the same time. But this has got it. Your shoulder has got to be forward. And you just drop your arms into the water. And then push forward with the top hand. But as notice that. If I don't have my shoulders turned forward, I don't have this angle on the blade. If I keep my shoulders straight and, and forward and hinge forward and drop in, you'll notice that my paddle is straight up and down. So this is not bad, but it can be better if it was angled out because then not only is it good because we know our shoulders turn and we're directing our energy forward, but when we have that slight angle, it gives us more leverage to, and more of a power boost at the initial push. And then your opposite shoulder, when you have the catch position, it's just, it's, it's like falling against a tree or falling against something. So we're using the momentum that we've developed forward and just falling forward on that handle pushing using this bottom hand as a leverage point. And then <clears throat> once we've come to the maximum position when our shoulders get square again, we're just 
allowing the blade to come back and keeping our push with the top hand until it gets to our knee and then we'll start, it'll just automatically start collapsing down and our top hand will arrive at our hip again. So, and we're, and we're also twisting our body so that this shoulder turns back. So the bottom hand shoulder turns back. So on the release, the bottom hand shoulder turns back. And then at the reach, bottom hand, the top hand shoulder is, bottom hand shoulder is forward. At the reach, the top hand shoulder is forward as well as when we drop into the water for the catch, the top hand shoulder is forward. And then we come through and we're pushing with our top hand. I wanted to demonstrate the motion to the reach position and what that looks like from the forward view. Now, when we come forward, we want to develop that momentum forward so you are going to see the cart move forward as I move into position. Now to demonstrate this slowly, my hand starts at my hip, my other hand is back behind my hip, and I'm drawing it forward like a sword out of a scabbard. Now I'm going to demonstrate this slowly at first. So we're going forward, our hand comes up, and it ends up so when my arm is straight, my lower arm is straight, the, the top hand is above my head, one fist length, and it's directly in the center of my head. Now that's the reach position, and the paddle is angled forward. So when we come forward to demonstrate the reach, Notice that I have some momentum. Notice that my head position moves from straight up as I'm hinging forward. So the hinge is important in developing that momentum. And you want to keep this hand low and you want to minimize the flare out of your paddle. The other thing, important thing to note is the turning of my shoulders. When my, when my, at the release position, my top hand is on the T-handle and it's at my hip. Then as I come forward, I'm reaching and hinging at the same time. And this shoulder goes from the back position, twisting forward to the forward position. So this is important. The, the position of your shoulder pointing forward directs the energy forward, but it also allows you to have an angle on the paddle when you come into the water. If I have my shoulders straight across and I hinge when I come down into the water, my paddle is going to be straight up and down. And what we want is a slight angle on the paddle when it enters the water. In order to do that, you want to have this shoulder forward. So when you come to the reach, you want this shoulder forward. You want to maintain that shoulder forward as you drop your hands into the water and then you're pushing. And that slight angle helps when you initially apply power because you're essentially you're, you're falling forward on the blade with this shoulder coming forward. So, and one other thing I want to note, when you're pushing forward, you're not dropping down further. So 
that's the extent of your hinging is done at the time you reach forward. Now, when you reach forward, this T-handle should be above your head at the reach. Should be above your head, but in the center of your head. And when you go to the catch position, this shoulder is forward, and you're just rotating this top hand over, and you go from a center position in the canoe with your head centered. When you go to the catch position, you're going to rotate that hand over, and your, your, your body will then lean out a little. So this will be the center of the canoe on this side of your head and you want to keep this ear inside the gunnel. So when you're at the reach position, shoulders turn forward here, you're going, and your hands above your head, one fist length, then you're turning and leaning a little and dropping your hands at the same time into the water. And that shoulder turn is what's going to give a little bit of angle to your blade. And it helps when you, you apply that initial pressure, the leverage um, and the movement of your paddle will give you a little bit more boost than if you had no shoulder turn. The paddle is straight up and down and then you hit. So that's the reason we want the shoulder turn. We want it to give it a little bit of angle as you enter the water which gives it a little bit more boost when you apply the power.